Who, who do you think it is? Is it Naya? Who do, who do you think? Yeah. I think it is. I think it's Naya. Naya, <laughs> Naya thanks for calling in. Say hi to Rob. Hello, Rob. How are you? <laughs> good. How are you doing, Naya? <laughs> really good. Really good. Hey, go Rio. <laughs> yeah, right on. <laughs> and uh, Oakland yeah. Raiders, uh, Naya ended up as an Oakland Raiderette for a while. And I did for two years. And yeah. So cool. You could still pass as one, I think. Absolutely. No, <laughs> but I was a Rio <laughs> Americano, uh, you know, Raider, yeah. cheerleader, and then years later, uh, Oakland Raider. So yeah. pretty, pretty funny. And I've yeah. been at some of those games seeing you. So that's yeah. It's always it all goes back to K Rad, K Rad, and Chuck yeah. Gebhardt. They helped us right. open up, and you know, uh, they, they helped me open up as a person and. You know, have more confidence in public speaking oh, yeah. and and really uh, knowing what I wanted. So I owe that to Chuck. Yeah, I what a great opportunity. I'm so glad we uh, we were afforded that uh, when we went to high school. That radio station was wonderful and schools out for summer. Alice Alice uh, Cooper. I can't ever hear that without taking me right <laughs> back to listening to you guys on KRHT. So yeah. fun. It's really Good. nice for you to call in. Let's talk again in the future. Oh, yeah. Well, wait a minute, Alex. Yeah. You guys uh, keep up the good work. Great. Thanks a lot. That's awesome. Uh, so, Rob, getting back to your career and um, 91X, you know what Michael Haller and hey Tony. Alex, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but before you, I don't want to forget this. Hey, Rob, for more than 10 years, Billy Bones asked me, make sure you say hello to Rob for me because he I, I mentioned that I knew you from high school and he would tell me this like every two three weeks for <laughs> more than 10 years and now I, I left Clear Channel about 10 years ago so I haven't seen Billy for about 10 but he just wanted to say hello to you and and that's it I'm done yeah Rob the mighty 690 you worked with Jeff Hunter there right oh yeah wow that's a blast from the past Jeff Hunter came to K Rad. Do you remember? Uh, yeah, he came to Gebhardt's class uh, in '79 or '80 and did a presentation. Uh, but I wondered if you already knew him at that point. Later on, I worked with him at Quad. Both Sam and I did. He's the one. Yes, I did know him. And you know what's crazy? He left two weeks after he hired me. Really? <laughs> um, so the That's rest amazing. was history. He got me in the door and he did me a huge favor. And then he kind of left it up to me. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. And you started as an intern, right, according to Halloran or Tolkoff? At 690, no. I started as a DJ. Oh, okay. Um, Doing the I, late I night? Was a, I, start, I did weekend DJ, and then I uh, became promotion director of 690, and I was promotion director and weekends, and then um, I stopped being on the air, and I became uh, – marketing director of both stations, okay. 91X and 690. And both stations, actually 690 was getting into L.A., right, and showing up in the ratings in L.A., right? Yes. Whereas 91X, the FM station, really doesn't get into L.A. unless it's really amazing weather, right? <laughs> yeah. It, it's 690 at one point had about uh like a two share in la mm -hmm, that's um, big in certain demographics it mm -hmm. had a high cum um and you know the, the AM, it's hard to even imagine am music on am radio yeah in, you know today no, so that's going way back it's in fact that was the transition yeah, 79 was the big year that uh, the big transition from am to fm because of new technology that really made FM radio easy to hear in your car where you could drive around and not hear all that uh, ghosting and, you know, interference. So I, I think 79, that's when KZAP started getting big in Sacramento. Um, uh, 91X was a rock station until 83, then it became alternative. So you stayed there throughout the 80s, right? I, so I spent... I was there five years total, 82 to 87. Okay. And, yeah, and um, I think 82 is when I started, like, very, the end of 81, beginning of 82 is when I went, um, started working at uh, at 690. 
And I also owned a DJ company at the same time, Party which sound. I later sold. <laughs> yeah, and I I ended up selling it to 91X when I um, left the station. Oh, great. Good move. So uh, then they started booking the gigs with your equipment. I remember doing, uh, y- y- you did a gig in Sacramento that I went to at John F. Kennedy High. That was my former high school. And uh, you did, y- yeah, it was an, an amazing night. You you had a really good sound system, big clip speakers. Um, uh, I'm sure you remember all that. I remember <laughs> the Morant's turntables you use at gigs, like wooden bass turntables. They looked so cool. You had, very state unusual. Of, you had state-of-the-art <laughs> stuff compared to a lot of DJs, I thought. Well, you know, the c- an interesting thing, when I was doing DJing in Sacramento, mm-hmm. there, there was no DJ equipment even available in America yet. You mm-hmm. know, the mobile DJing right. stuff started in in Europe. Right. And so it came from the UK and I met a British guy here who was actually came over here with Richard Blade who used yeah. to be on K Rock who's kind of still does some rock of the 80s shows I think on satellite and yeah. stuff and yeah. on some other stations and uh this guy Mark Rowland started a company to sell all of this equipment. And so when I moved to San Diego, I ma- I knew him and eventually I started buying systems, so I had about four or five different systems, and I could, you know, in one night do four or five parties. I had three vans. I wow. had all kinds of people <laughs> working for me. Plus, I was doing the radio station thing, and I had a guy managing that for me, and the radio station actually afforded a lot of in- entrees for, like, corporate accounts. You know, we would do, like, there was a cruise ship called the Invader. Mm-hmm. Um, they used to do these these uh like reggae cruises we would do reggae out there like 10 to midnight you know late night cruises we did uh stuff at sea world we did you know you could get a 91x dj to come to your school um so a lot of the djs you know would show up somebody would put all the equipment together for them and everything and all they would do just come they would just drive to the thing steve west would come out there and dj a lot of schools and things like that it was fun yeah i mean sam and i did a lot of dj gigs too we did them through the station quad in sacramento yeah. and I, i've personally done almost 1700 total in my career wow. can you believe that i've done about 500 but a, a lot of well, mine don't you wish that you were making the kind <laughs> of money that uh <laughs> the chain smokers and marshmallow <laughs> are making uh, no <laughs> kidding well, you know, in S- in San Francisco, where I lived for a while, I did gigs for a grand a gig, and those were mostly weddings. A lot of them were at wineries. So if I could do that every hour, yeah, or every day, <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> anyway, the music's kicking in. That means we got to wrap up the show in the next three minutes. Rob, um, last week, Michael Halloran said that uh, you were responsible for um, 91X getting a million Bumper stickers printed per year. Sounds like a good <laughs> That's idea. <it. laughs> yeah. Um, I know that we we printed a lot of stickers, and, uh, and that, that was key? something that I... Is that the key to marketing? Lots of stickers everywhere. Lots of visibility. I think the key to marketing 91X was um, expanding the brand beyond alternative music. And uh, and really getting into more lifestyle marketing, and so the brand, you know, making the brand represent a lot of things. Which, you know, obviously the programming folks like Max at the time who was programming it, um, and I, you know, got into it a few times because I was trying to expand the radio station, and you know, he didn't want to alienate the core. So sometimes we would get into it over that, um, but. Outside of that, I think they really appreciated the fact that I pushed the envelope, you know, into surfing and skating and um, traditional sports, but also, you know, the extreme sports at, at that time and uh, movies and television. You know, those were the kinds of things that we really spent a lot of time on, and we tried to be at all those all concert events as well. So that was kind of a given that you were at the music events, but we expanded far beyond that. And that's how we got known, you know, we were everywhere. 
Rob, it's been great talking with you. It's all been fun, and I'd love to talk with you more in the future, these kind of conversations. Well, because this is the best show so far, I think. Well, I think they just keep getting better. And well, that's Rob, true. Rob, we really appreciate you joining oh, us today. It. Thank you very much. And let's. Uh, I'm honored to, to, to talk with the two of you guys again. I really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. That's really cool. Thanks a lot, Rob. Hey, man, take care. And that wraps up another great episode of Social Music Talk on WSRadio.com. <laughs> <laughs>